Your Majesties, authorities, distinguished laureates, ladies and gentlemen. It is a very great honor, a very great pleasure to be here today at the heart of the Principality of Asturias to receive this splendid award to which I offer heartfelt thanks. Humankind's most momentous invention is the sentence. There have been great civilizations that did not have the concept of the wheel, but they had to have the sentence, for without it, they would have been neither great nor civilized. It is with the sentence that we think, speculate, calculate, imagine. It is with the sentence that we declare love, declare war, declare oaths. It is with the sentence that we declare the self. Our laws are written in sentences. One might go so far as to say that it is in sentences that our very world itself is written, even if ill-written. Others will make other claims. The scientist will say that the invention of mathematics is our supreme achievement as a species. And it is true, the language of mathematics is a thing of sublime beauty. Its great strength is its rigor. However, the great strength of the sentence, and by extension language, is that rigor is precisely, gloriously, what it lacks. No matter how clear, direct, and simple a sentence is, it will always be, at some level, ambiguous. And the essence of life is ambiguity. The language of sentences wraps itself around reality in an endless effort to encompass it, to comprehend it, to express it. The effort is in vain, as it must be. Ultimate reality is ultimately beyond us. There is no such thing as a thing in itself. There are only the relations between things. All is contingency. As Emerson beautifully says, we live amid surfaces, and the true art of life is to skate well on them. Language, we may think, cuts no ice, but it does cut wonderful figures. As writers, we honor the sentence so that we might cleave through to the quick of things. We hone our sentences so that we might cleave through to the quick of things. We will not. Sentences will not. We are too humanly slow. Yet we go on trying to say it, trying to get it said, trying to get it right. We should not succeed, but our glory is, as my fellow countryman Samuel Beckett knew, that we carry on daunted, but never quite defeated. The effort is not in vain, even though every full stop is an admission of failure. To, to speak is to be. Rilke, in the Duino Elegies, puts it as well as it has ever been put. Are we perhaps here just for saying? House, bridge, fountain, gate, jug, fruit tree, window, possibly pillar, tower, but for saying, remember. Oh, for such saying as never the things themselves hoped so intensely to be. I have spent my life wrestling with sentences. I cannot imagine a more privileged existence. Thank you.